Thank you for joining the broadcast of the Progressive Missionary Baptist Church, the friendly church on the avenue located at 3301 King Street in the city of Berkeley, pastored by Dr. Earl C. Stuckey. Our prayer is that your faith has not wavered and your trust remains in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that even though we are socially distant, the church is in you and God inhabits all the praises of those who worship him in spirit and in truth. We are grateful for our media team. Our psalmists today are Cassandra Foster and Minister Michael Rains, accompanied by Tori Campbell, and I am your announcer, Sarah Stevens. At this time, we will be led in song, followed by scripture and prayer. Good morning. We're glad to be able to come to you. This old psalm says, we have come this far by faith. And the scripture says, for we, for by faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. So join in. We want you to sing along just as if you were present, because we all are just present in the same spirit. is 
is real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt me, but I can't live without him. That is why. He's real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt me. But I can't live without him. So many people doubt me. But I can't live Amen. Hopefully Jesus is real to you. Greetings as we greet you as we uh, were in your respective places, hoping that God has continued to keep your spirits high and upbeat. We're going to do scripture and prayer. So we're going to take a look at Psalms 91 verses 1 through 7. Psalms 91 says this, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress my God, in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. May we all, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearers and doers of his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you for this day and thank you for the fact that we can seek you out as a refuge. No matter what is going on in turmoils of life, we know that we will find our comfort in you and in you alone. The circumstances in life are going to come, Lord, but we are guaranteed that we have access to you via prayer and that you hear us and that you watch out for us. We thank you for all of the things that are going on, Lord, in our life that you have shown to us. Even in this time, you have given to us um, some many upbeat things and things for us to positively learn and grow from. I pray that you help us to utilize this time to be able to grow closer to you, to grow closer to your word and to grow closer to each other, even though we may be distant. We come before you now, Lord, lifting up our leaders in terms of our government, in terms of our local um, agencies and the scientists who are um, behind the scenes working diligently to try and find a cure. I pray that you'll help each one of them as they make decisions during these times to realize all the lives that are being impacted by the decisions that, are being, that they are coming across and that you will just continue to uphold their decision making so that way um, they will seek you for guidance and wisdom, Lord. We pray for now the local assembly, the church in this time, that you'll just continue to be with it and strengthen it. For the church has never batted an eye during this entire situation, Lord. The church is the people, and we praise God for the fact that you have invested in us, not in buildings, but you allow us to remain connected. Keep us encouraged and hopeful as we eagerly await your return, Lord. Give us the strength and guidance and wisdom to be able to live in this life, Lord, how you would have us to live and to be servants for you, even in these situations and times, Lord. We ask that you'll just be with us, be with the family, be with the, uh, the Slayton family still the, at the passing of, of our dear brother and fellow minister, Cornell Slayton. I just ask that you'll just help us as a church family to continue to support them as they go through the grieving process, Lord. And we just ask that you'll just continue to be with them as, as they are working through this um, difficult time. I ask that you will just continue to help us to grow, Lord, as we, as only you can help us grow. For it is only you, you control our growth and our maturity. 
Help us to continue to just seek your word and your face that we may understand how to behave in these times. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
We pray that this broadcast has been uplifting to you today. At this time, I'd like to announce Pastor Earl C. Stuckey, who will deliver today's message. Good morning, Progressive. Now say good morning to you, Christian neighbor. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. I want to say on behalf of my wife, we miss all of you. Uh, we miss seeing your face. We miss your handshakes and your hugs and sometimes your kisses. May the Lord continue to bless all of you and hopefully now it won't be too long before we can uh, meet and greet one another in person. I would like for you to, at this time, open your Bible. Open your Bible to Psalm number uh, 91. Psalm, Psalm 91. Psalm 91. And just keep it open there. I want to speak on this subject today, how to be safe in unsafe times, how to be safe in unsafe times. The Bible, and I should start by pledging allegiance to the Bible. I don't know how many of you love the Bible as I do, but all of us should love the Word of God. So at this time, I want to pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy Word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. I will read it to be wise, practice it to be holy, and believe it to be saved. Psalms 91. How to be safe in unsafe times. Psalms 91. One in verse one says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So we see in this verse that the safest place in all the world is not in a bomb shelter, it is not in a bank vault. It is not even in social distance, not in wearing a mask, because this coronavirus, this pandemic, is causing all of us to look like the Long Ranger. All of us like the Long Ranger are wearing a mask. But I want you to know that 
the safety that I'm talking about is not found in wearing a mask. uh, The safest place is abiding. It's abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. It's abiding that is constantly living in the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah, that's the safest place in all the world. The safest place in all the world is in the shadow of the Almighty. One thing I know about shadows, and I know you do too, that shadows cannot hurt you. Shadows cannot hurt you. Psalms 23, verse 4, David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because shadows cannot hurt you. Shadows are simply there to remind us of something that is real. But we are not trusting in other things that we practice from time to time to keep us safe. We want to make sure that we are in the safest place, which is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Shadows cannot hurt you. David, let me say uh, in Psalms 23, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. God is with us in the sunshine. He's in us in the storm. He is in us uh, in the rain. He is in us in times of danger. So let's make sure that we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. In the shadow of the Almighty, it's a place of safety. Psalms 4 and verse 8 says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only maketh me to dwell in safety. Do you all know that while we are asleep, God is watching over us and keeping us safe? It is not our burglar alarm. It is not our dead boat locks on our doors. But if we're safe during the night, it is because God is keeping us safe. Someone has said, and I think now they'll put it in a song, all night, all day, the angels of God are watching over us. So we want to make sure that during these uh, times of danger, uh, that we are in the safe place, and that is dwelling, living, abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. Next thing I want to say is about uh, the Lord being our place and our person of safety is in Psalms 127. And verse 1, it says, Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman is watching in vain. In the days of Israel, uh, while the people of Israel were asleep, they always had someone watching. Uh, The way the city was built, it had a wall around it. And the watchman would get up in the watchtower and he would watch to see if there was danger approaching. But uh, the psalmist says, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman is watching in vain. And so we know that when we lay down to sleep, God is watching over us. And as we go about our daily tasks, God is watching over us. So we want to make sure that uh, during these times of danger, that we make sure that we are abiding 
under the shadow of the Almighty. That means living. It means working. It means sleeping. Everything we do, we want to make sure that we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Why is that so important? Is because if we're in the shadow of the Almighty, God will keep us safe. Second thing I want to say uh, about abiding under the shadow of the Almighty in these trouble and dangerous time is in times like these, we not only need to be abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, but in times like these, we need a Savior. Yes, we need a Savior. James 4 and 8 says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord for the Lord will have mercy upon him and he will abundantly pardon. So in times like these, we need a savior. And the best thing to do, James 4, 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And the Lord Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. That's what we need in this restless time. And the times when there's so much uh, unrest and violence throughout the land. It's not only in the United States of America, but it is all over the world. Violence, violence, violence is everywhere. In the streets, it is in uh, the homes, it is in the marketplace. Uh, this is a time of violence and it's widespread. It is, it is national, it is global. But what we need uh, is, is to make sure uh, that we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Jesus uh, came, and he's the only one uh, that we are told in Scripture who can really uh, give us rest. As you know, the Jews had a Sabbath day rest, and that was on a Saturday. But the Lord Jesus came, he fulfilled the Sabbath, and he said to them, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Now, in order to rest in Christ, you have to cease from your own work uh, and start doing his work. And if you cease to do your work, and if your work is like my work, sometimes it's a work of sin. It's a, it's a, it's a work of coming short of the glory of God. It is not doing all of the things that God has commanded us to do. But the Lord Jesus said, you come to me and I will give you rest. And that means we have to cease from doing what we do and do what he wants us to do. And that's what the Bible calls resting, resting. And so the third thing I want to say is, if we are abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, if the Lord Jesus is our Savior, then let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Psalm 63 and verse 7 says, Because thou hast been our help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will we rejoice. That's what Christians ought to be doing today while we are shut in and while we are doing things to keep us physically safe. We want to make sure that we 
live in an attitude of praise. We want to praise God. So many people are complaining, grumbling, and mumbling about a whole lot of things that they have no control over. What we need to do is make sure that we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, and if we are, we ought to live in an attitude of praise. We ought not just praise Him on Sunday. We ought to praise Him every day of the week. Because if you're able to get up in the morning, you're doing it by uh, the strength of God. In Him we live and move and have our being. And so in this time of violence and corruption, and danger. We want to make sure that we live in an attitude of praise. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. In everything, not just some things. We tend to give him praise and thanks when things are going well. Why not do it when things are not going well? I mean, when there's death in the family, when there is sickness, when we are out of work, and when we really cannot pay our bills, let's praise God. It it doesn't say praise God sometime. It says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Praise him from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sun. Let's praise God. God is worthy of our praise. Everything we have, he gave us. What we are, he made us. And what we know, he's teaching us. Let's praise him and give him thanks because he is worthy. And so don't forget, friend, uh, this is a time of praise. And we want to make sure that we praise our God. We want to make sure that we praise him for saving us and uh, filling us with the Holy Spirit. And we want to thank him for giving us the privilege to serve uh, in a church, in a community, and in this world. We want to make sure that we uh, praise him for just giving us an opportunity to represent him in these troubled times. Let's praise him that he gives us uh, the strength and the know-how to witness to people and to tell them about Jesus. I guess all of us know by now who are Christians that the Lord Jesus is the answer. He's the answer to our problem. So let's be in an attitude of praise. And as the psalmist says, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised in everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And I heard the people of God say, Amen. Now, Christian friends, uh, I've been talking about dwelling in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. Some of you may not be able to do that because you do not belong to Christ. You are, a, you are not a, a believer. You are not a follower of Christ. These promises are made to those who belong to God. And so in closing, I want to just take time and just ask you, what is your relationship with the Lord like? Do you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Can you say without doubt that the Lord Jesus is my Savior? He's my Lord. Have you ever confessed him as the Son of God, as the Son of God? The Bible said, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. And God makes salvation a criteria. And the criteria is that 
You must believe on his son. The Bible says God has given to us eternal life, but this eternal life is in God's son. So I just want to take time and ask you, do you have a relationship with God? Is the Lord Jesus your savior? Can you say without a doubt if you die today that you're going to be absent from the body but present with the Lord and you are able to say that and know for sure that you will be with him only if you have him as your own personal savior. Oh, beloved, wherever you are and whoever you are, God loves you and he wants to save you from a life of sin and give you the gift of eternal life. So right now, in your house, in your bedroom, in your rumpus room, wherever you are, in the quietness of your heart, just simply say to God, Lord, I know that I am a sinner, but today I believe that the Lord Jesus is your son, and I'm asking you to come into my life to be my savior and to be my Lord. I acknowledge my sins. I know that I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. Lord, I want to go to heaven. And so now I'm accepting Christ as my personal savior. And beloved, if you are doing that, if you have done that, that just know that God will bless your life in all of your going out, your coming in, your ups and your downs, your joys and your sorrow. God will never leave you. He will always be with you and bless you. And I'm praying today that you join the ranks of millions of people around this world who belong to the Lord Jesus. And someday, someday, we're going to be with him. I hope you will join us in making that all-important decision. And if you do it, we'd like to hear from you. Write us and tell us. Or you can come when we are allowed to reassemble and just tell us. We'd like to have you to become a member of this church. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. And God people said, Amen. Till 